Hello and welcome to All You Need to Know About Battlefield Play for Free Movement. Now, here in the game menu, we see the options, and I'm going to cover everything in a lot better detail. Movement. Here we are on foot. Movement forward, backwards, strafe left, strafe right, look up, look down, turn left, turn right, jump, parachute, sprint, crouch. Now, these are pretty self-explanatory, and of course, if you mess anything up, you can always reset all controls to the default settings. Under mouse, at the bottom left of the image, you see sensitivity, yaw factor, and pitch factor. And also an invert mouse. Now, uh, sensitivity, the higher the sensitivity, the faster your unit will turn, the faster and more sensitive mouse, any mouse movements will be picked up. Your factor is the is a factor that allows you to see how you know is how sensitive you are looking left and right. Pitch factor is how sensitive you are looking up and down. Invert mouse inverts the movement of up and down mouse. So moving your mouse just upwards would cause you to look downwards, and looking downwards would cause you to you to look upwards. Weapons you have fire and zoom. Fire obviously fires your weapon. Zoom allows you to use your weapon sights. For example, if you have a iron sight, you just look down the iron sight. Zoom, when using infantry weapons, makes you a lot more accurate. R, presses, pressing the R, will reload any spent ammunition. Next slot, and previous slot, is your mouse button, your mouse wheel. Rolling this wheel will cause you to select different weapons, and then clicking will then cause you to select or activate the selected tool. The equipment bar is what you see at the bottom. Your weapons, tools, gadgets, medical things. Altering this from top to bottom, slot 1 to 10, slot 1 is the one at the bottom left, and slot 10 is the one at the bottom right. For vehicle, this also controls your land vehicles and sea vehicles. Now, the only differences here b between foot is that your vehicles have different sensitivities. Otherwise, I personally recommend that you use the same controls on foot as for your vehicles. Now, the repair button in here is, if you may see it, is currently set at the question mark. Repair, no matter what you set it to, does nothing. It is Nothing. It's nothing. It just doesn't exist. And of course, in uh, just this is just covering the basic movements, covering strategies, movement strategies, and uh, tactical movement will be covered in a separate, dedicated video for vehicle and aircraft. Now, aircraft is different because you actually have now you have to combat and wor worry about another axis. You now can fly. Basically, yeah. You know, your tanks generally don't fly. They drive forwards, backwards, turn to the left and turn to the right. Your aircraft can fly forwards, backwards, well, not really backwards, but fly forwards, fly backwards, turn to the left, turn to the right. Your pitch nose up and down, and that's, and that's the difference. Yet again, sensitivity controls how sensitive your vehicles your, or aircraft will react and how fast they will react. Of course sensitivity only applies to the mouse for vi foot, vehicle and aircraft so of course if you attempt to drive your vehicle with a joystick that is to be set by your own joystick controls. And under general you see commands that are set for all. These commands apply when you're in any vehicle. You know, on foot, in aircraft, in a boat, you name it. Certain things, however, are only active when you are, for example, in a vehicle or outside a vehicle. Enter and exit in a vehicle speaks for itself. You enter and exit the vehicle. This also may I notify you under the training allows you to toss back grenades. So changing enter and exit vehicle also alters the toss back grenade. Toggle camera. This is toggling third person view. Zoom map is allows you to zoom your map, your mini map in the bottom left corner, up to three different zooms. You have 
fully zoomed out, fully zoomed in, and a medium. medium. Show map opens a large map up. This can also be zoomed. Scoreboard shows the scoreboard. Also known as the scores, your personal score, kill death ratio, kill death, your XP earned. Screenshot, in this case PS is print screen, causes the game to capture a screenshot. This will be placed under your documents, battle EA games, battlefield play free, and then screenshots, I believe. Chat is your opens up at the chat window. Using your up arrow and down arrow, two buttons also that you cannot uh, alter, allows you to change or toggle between say to all or say to your own team. Of course, you can press T to open up a say to all and press Y to open up a say to team. Face camera or face cam is a camera that looks towards where you are pointing, so you basically look the opposite direction. Very useful for seeing if there's anybody stalking you behind you, or if there's an enemy aircraft flying behind you when you're flying a jet. The emotes is Q and allows you to bring up a menu of six options. Spotted, need medic, need repair, need ammunition, those things. And they will give a voice call out and a audiovisual cue to your teammates that, for example, you need ammunition, you need repairs, you have spotted an enemy, and such. And bookmarking a server is when you hold down tab, you press the bookmark server button, and in this case insert, and the server will be bookmarked. Bookmark servers end up here. And at any time, if you do not like the server anymore and you wish to unbookmark it, you may click the top right corner, the yellow star, and ta-da, this server is no longer bookmarked. Back to the options. Well, that actually covers all. Actually, no, it doesn't. Under settings, you have video. This one is the video settings, how uh, your resolutions, your uh, frame rate, your video quality, is the graphics quality. Super low, medium, low, high. And that affects rendering distance, draw distance, and the distance upon you see enemies, the distance. And also, it also causes certain objects such as grass, bushes, to stop rendering. Audio effects volume is the volumes of gunfire, explosions, tanks driving around. Music volume is what you hear right now in the background, music. Audio quality for me is bugged, I cannot change it. And audio renderer is either is it software or hardware that renders the audio. Auto reload weapon. If you have auto reload weapon turned on, upon emptying a clip on foot, your weapons will be automatically reloaded. If you have that turned off, you will have to manually press R to reload a weapon. Camera shake is when turned on, causes your camera to shake or sway when you run, causes sniper rifles upon zoom and weapons upon zoom to have scope sway. Generally, some people find it very nauseous to actually have camera shake on and have that turned off. I have it turned off because I also find myself feeling less willing to play the game because of, well, headaches if you wish. You feel very bad when you play the game with camera shake on. So, that concludes the main menu. Let's actually now see how this is put into practice in-game. To move forwards, press your forwards key, in this case, W. You'll immediately see yourself moving forwards. To move left, click the left key, in this case, A. To move right, press D. And to reverse or move backwards, press S. You can also allocate a sprint button. Sprinting makes you move forwards and only forwards at, next, at a higher rate. While sprinting, you cannot strafe left or right and neither can you sprint backwards. Sprinting also works when you're swimming.
This is not sprinting, and this is sprinting. You can also sprint for an infinite amount of time. Now, if, for example, you end up somewhere you do not wish to be, you may press escape, which is, I believe, an unbindable, you know, a key that you cannot change, and you will come up with three options. Resume battle, removes the menu, which would be the same as, for example, pressing escape again, leave battle, which causes you to leave the game that you are in, and you can suicide. Upon death, you can either deploy in battle, deploying at the closest possible location, in this case, the aircraft carrier, because we I have not captured any flags, or you can select to spawn at base, which causes you to spawn at the uncap, or the uncapable base, or home base, or... Yeah, you get the point. Now, in the bottom, you see 10 items. Two that looks like guns, a power drill, and a RPG, two syringes, bandages, a anti-vehicle mine, another pistol, a knife, and an another pistol. Now, this is your equipment menu, of course, which is also my customizable. Which, uh... Now, by default, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then you see M2. Now, M2 is usually 7, and 8, and 9, and so on, until 0. It is highly recommended that you retrain and respec those into something that you find a lot more comfortable. Something that you can quickly switch to. So, for example, if you're in combat, and you... Empty a magazine, you can quickly switch your pistol out, make sure it's there, and make sure it's a, you know, you switch to the pistol instead of an RPG or a pair tool or a medic box. Something that you can actually use in your combat. Now, to cover some ground vehicles and the movement of ground vehicles, just a notice ground vehicles also are affected by the same keys that you are by default the same keys that you use on infantry. However, movement of these are different. Because you're now driving a, a motorized vehicle, you're no longer moving on your own feet. Now to enter or exit the vehicle, you get this tooltip that says press E to enter. You do not get it to leave the vehicle, but it is the same button. Yet again, ground vehicle controls in your options also affect naval vehicles, which would in this case be the boats and that thing over there, the APC. To move forwards, it's W. Move backwards, it's S. Little bug camera view there. Now, without the vehicle actually being in motion, pressing A or D, no matter how hard you mash them, is going to do you a whopping lot of nothing. To actually make the vehicle move left or right, you have to press W or S. Let's just take W for the moment. And then press A or D. The same applies in reverse. Well, now, pressing D makes you turn to the right, and A, I mean, D, A makes you turn, A makes you turn to the right, and D makes you turn to the left. When reversing, controls are inverted. And the inversion of the controls is also, apply, also, also applies to, well, it, it applies for the direction your vehicle is moving, so if you're still driving forwards, but you're trying holding down reverse button, you're still going to use the forwards key set. So you press A, your left button, to go left, and D, your right button, to go right. Here we have an actual ground vehicle. Using the mouse, pan the camera around, inside of the vehicle. Of course, certain vehicles that, like this one, that have a limited traverse of weapons, I cannot look to the left anymore, or to the right, or up, or down. This is, for some vehicles, limited, some vehicles, unlimited. Now, the controls are the same here, except we are now no longer operating a naval vehicle. We do are not affected by drag in the water, or the fact that the engine is rear-mounted. Yet again, forwards, backwards, and mashing A or D, as you see the wheels are moving, nothing still happens. So now if I wanted to drive left, I have to drive forwards and then left. If I wanted to drive right, I have to drive forwards and right. 
Another thing to note is that vehicles are affected by terrain. You may, for example, skid, you can fly, you can take off, you can crash, you can end up upside down. Now let's capture a flag. Preferably one that has some serious vehicles that spawn. Come on. Now, while driving vehicles, another thing to notice is that if you ram a solid object, you take damage. As you now see, this vehicle is no longer in pristine condition, the engine is smoking. Let's actually get it back into the capture circle. Vehicles, you can distinguish them on their health by when they're full health. As you see, they look pristine sharp. If they take some damage, you may see engines start smoking, and eventually they'll catch fire. Oops. And of course, when they're blown up, they look like a smoldering wreck. Now this one, you see the engine is, is already smoking. Put some more bullets in it. And then you see a little glimpse of fire. And of course, when you're in a vehicle that has alarmingly low health, in, you will notice in the bottom right corner on the health, the uh, plus button, the number is flashing. If we enter a full health vehicle, or a pristine, you know, a vehicle that has solid health, that number does not flash. Let's damage this thing a bit more. There, you can now hear and see black smoke, and you can hear that it's supposed to be on fire. Entering such a vehicle, well, the vehicle takes damage. Over time, it takes two health per second, and eventually burns out and blows up. It, it is This applies for all vehicles, except for stationary manned defense such as anti-aircraft turrets and tower missiles. Now let's use a better example, the tank. Yet again, you cannot turn your vehicle without actually moving it. But the tank is different. It has a reasonable pivot, meaning you can, in ways, turn on the spot. Only tracked vehicles, such as the tanks, can do this. The tanks, unlike infantry, when using your mouse to turn, you snap around instantly. Tanks cannot do that. They are mechanically operated and therefore take a lot longer to actually start to turn. This can, however, be used to your advantage, making accuracy because of the power traverse reasonably easy. Now, at the bottom, you see LMB, RMB, and X. X is your countermeasure or defense slot. In this case, it launches smoke. Smoke is useful against, of course, I do not have somebody to, dis to show this to you, but let's enter this vehicle, exit it, and plant a tracer dart on it. Watch. And that hit. Now let's retrace it and try that again. Now, okay, that was probably not a good demonstration. Let's reload. What I was attempting to demonstrate is that the vehicles take that when traced. Let's actually let this RPG go a little farther. Trace it. Here comes the RPG. Deploy the smoke. And the RPG is no longer tracking the vehicle. This also applies to jets when you're being locked onto, for example, by anti aircraft missiles and helicopters locked onto by RPGs and, and missiles. Deploying countermeasures will make any lock on weapon be fooled, hopefully. There is a bug that causes them to not be, which is well, a bug. And the missiles will are supposed to then veer away and miss. As for RPGs, 
upon losing a tracer or a track, they just simply fly in a straight line. RMB for a vehicle is alternate weapons. Of course, I do not have them trained at the moment. You need them in the training. For the tank, you see at the bottom right, there is a greyed out 25. The 25 is a coaxial machine gun. Seen is a little thing right next to the barrel. And that can also fire and is very useful against infantry. For the APC, you see two missile tubes on top of the turret. For the APC, the alternate weapon fire is a Tau missile. Very effective against armor, very little splash. And the APC, while also being a vehicle, has a faster power traverse from the big because it's a lighter turret. Pressing C as you and F C is a third person first person alternate camera. It toggles first between first person and third person, and holding F is a face cam. You look at your face. To fire the weapon, the default weapon by default is left mouse button. And the alternate weapon is right mouse button. For the APC and for all vehicles that have more than one ammunition per clip, if you wish, cannot be reloaded. You have to manually empty the clip to actually force the reload. And let's use this car again. On top of this car you have a 50 caliber machine gun, which is capable of damaging everything in the, in the game, including tanks. You just have to shoot the right spot. And there we are, APC on fire. Boom. Certain vehicles, such as the APC, has an inherent weak spot that allows people with small arms and uh, larger caliber, well, not larger caliber, but small arms fire to damage them. In the APC, for example, it can be shot in the wheels. The attack helicopter can be shot in the wheels to deal damage to them. Very little. But any damage any, is any damage. And 50 caliber machine guns do five times more damage to uh, you know, four to five times more damage to the wheels of an APC. I can very quickly take an APC down. That pretty much covers it for the ground vehicles. Let's have a look at the aircraft. Here we have an attack helicopter. Upon starting up an attack helicopter, the rotor blades and engine need a warm-up. And, and until this warm-up sequence is completed, the vehicle cannot take off quickly. Now, in this case, it is different. For helicopters, W goes increases throttle up, S decreases throttle, and allows you to return back to the ground. Going back to first person view. With default, you have a mouse and keyboard setup. You may and should customize this to your preferences. I, for example, right now, I am flying keyboard only. Of course, I will cover helicopter, jet, and movements of these in a lot better detail in a separate videos for the jets and attack helicopters. And of course, as per usual, crashing a vehicle into any solid object or sinking a non-floatable vehicle will blow it up. Boats and the APCs of both nations float. All other vehicles, such as tanks, cars, helicopters, jets, they do not float. Driving such a vehicle into the water causes you to take damage and eventually blow up. Now, with helicopters, you have multiple different axes. You have your... let's actually get this thing in the air. Your throttle, of course, as I said already, changes how you go up or down. You have pitch. 
pitching down, causing your nose to go down. And with throttle, you go forwards. Pitching up, causes your nose to pull up. And with throttle, you'll reverse. Or fly backwards. Your roll axis allows you to tilt to the left and tilt to the right. Such tilt causes you to, with throttle, allow you to strafe left or strafe to the right. This can be very useful for pointing the front of your nose and your camera towards an enemy while be still being able to maneuver and avoid missiles, shells, everything. And with uh, anything, you also have a parachute which by default is by your jump button which I actually have not covered. Upon exiting a vehicle you see the toolbar, press spacebar to deploy parachute. The parachute is very powerful and in fact is so powerful that a deployed parachute will stop you instantly. So you can actually activate this this far above the ground and still not take any damage whatsoever. Here we have an American jet. These are special. Slowing down and eventually holding down S actually activates a hover mode. As with the helicopter, your pitch changes your nose, your roll changes your aircraft, well, uh, changes your aircraft's look against the uh, ground. Of course, yet again, aircraft will be covered in more detail later. Here, well, yeah, I'll cover this later. <laughs> but let's just quickly before we wrap up, show you what a parachute can do, and what the E button, as in entering a vehicle, can do for you. Let's try to get as low to the ground as possible. There you go. Instantly stopped midair. Pretty much almost landed instantly as well. That would not have happened in real life. Now, let's also suicide again, go back to the carrier, pick up another vehicle. To enter a vehicle, you do not necessarily need to press E. You know, well, well you have to press E to get enter the vehicle, but you don't have to run up to the vehicle and press E. You could, for example, hold down E and move up to the vehicle. You'll enter the vehicle as soon as it is possible to enter it. Also, You'll usually enter most vehicles from the driver position, you'll, en you'll exit it on the left, and for the gunner positions, you'll enter it on the way, you know, in the way that your gun is pointing. See, so if your gun's pointing to the left, you'll exit on the left, if your gun's pointing to the right, you'll exit on the right. Let's take the jet again, and I'll show you the power of holding down E to enter a vehicle. Another thing to notice is that when free falling, the higher up at an altitude you are, let me try to emulate that. The higher up an altitude you are, the farther away you can fly. We're now at 2,000 altitude, way over the flight ceiling, if you wish. Looking up causes you to fly, f move forwards. Look at the map; that is very fast. Causes you to move forwards very fast. You now in this free fall position lose very little altitude. Looking down, on the other hand, causes you to fly downwards and faster, but forwards slower. Right now, I'm going to use this to my advantage and try to enter the vehicles down at A without actually being on the ground and manually getting in. Let's see if we can't hit the tank. Oops, failed. But that's just a failed demonstration. And another thing to demonstrate is that vehicles, you can't just beat anywhere up them to enter them, and that is probably the perfect demonstration. Most vehicles need to be entered from the side. Which is something to take note of. Usually, however, you can enter them from the front of the vehicle as well. Combat flight ceiling for jets is 800 meet altitude, 
Comet flight ceiling for helicopters is 600 altitude. Helicopters cannot go any higher than that. And above 800 uh, altitude, jets will start to lose control. And there we are. Instantly entered the vehicle. That concludes this. All you need to know about Battlefield 33, general movement, and general... Well, general movement. And see you in the next one.